Hi, you're watching the Austin Music Network. And I am the Reverend Horton Heat. Change the channel and I'll kill you. It's martini time. Being in Texas has helped my career a lot. Oh, my drink doesn't fit in that bucket, in this bucket. It's helped a lot. Right, you need to scoot the little fabric. Don't oh, want... touch the drink. No, it's okay. No, it's been a big help because Texas is a music state. A lot of people play music, and it's the best. You know, it's it's good. You know, when we travel overseas. Everybody's like, you know, Texas, Texas. You know, and so. It's fun, you know, That's it's a pretty good deal, you know, so. What about in terms of, like. But they always say we're from Austin. Live from Austin, the Reverend, we're going, we're from Dallas. Well, actually, I grew up in Corpus Christi, so if you put those two together, halfway between is Austin, so it's kind of close, but. the first train out is what I did. No, I, I, my parents are from Dallas, so I moved around. I lived in San Antonio and I lived in Austin too. That was really fun. I lived in Houston and I even lived in College Station for a while. So I've lived all over Texas and Dallas is just, you know, kind of a logical place because my family was up there and stuff. And, you know, I kind of ended up there. So. Six foot tall, she's a full grown woman who's got it all. Ba 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 big little baby. Ba 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 big little baby. She's a kid as she can be, but she's taller than me. Ba 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 big little baby. Ba 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 big, big, big little baby. Ba ba big, big, big little baby. She's a kid as she can be, but she's taller than me. Ba 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 big, big, big. Oh, little baby. I used to go to the original Antones on 6th Street. Excuse me, down here in, uh, you know, on 6th Street, before they moved up on Guadalupe. And go in there and see Buddy Guy and Junior Wells and then the Thunderbirds and Stevie Ray Vaughan and that whole deal. And uh, that was uh, quite, a, quite a learning thing for, you know, a young musician to be around all that, you know, because it was great music and it was really unpretentious. Can't tear it up enough. Don't want no full time love. Baby, let me be. I need a whole lot of pop time love to satisfy me. Don't want no handmade nails. Got the best rags on my back. I don't need. Dying 
tear it out Can't tear it up then no. Just solid like Nobody even really wanted or expected a record deal, you know. And in, in Texas back then, nobody got record deals. So you were playing music basically just to be playing the, the best you could play, you know. It didn't have any bearing on your career and record companies and any of that bullshit. It was, and I think that uh, that's been uh, one of the reasons why Texas has excelled so well is because, you know, we're not in California where all the bands are waiting for the, a big record deal next week. You know, we're all these bands that are sitting around all these cities in Texas going, you think we'll ever get a record deal, you know? Probably not, but let's keep playing, okay, you know? And so, you know, it, I think that that's a real positive influence on the, the artistic value of the music here, so. But, you know, it's it's a good place. It's laid back and and fun, you know? The, the crowds are good, the fans are really good. You drive all my nests your friends he thinks are cool Or you can see inside the straight cats to a bus You can see the bottle servers overseas You can party with the dead You crazy in the head You can't get away Oh, you can't get away from me See, I don't want any water in my city You're told by standing And you think you know what booking bands nationally. He had several different bands that did national tours and I went into his office I said, look, I know we can do good. We're doing good all over this region. You know, we kind of, we'd play in Dallas and then we'd come down to Austin, go to Houston, but we wanted to do a national tour and he told us, you'll die out there. So we blew him off. Now he's our manager, but, but we blew him off and we said, okay, we're gonna book our own tour. And like, I had several different people that booked our band. And we toured America without any pod, any kind of like product or anything, you know. Like we just went out there and we drive to these places. We got to Seattle and we didn't have any gigs or anything, but we just went there and ended up staying a week and playing three gigs and having a good time and getting a deal with Sub Pop Records. So that's how kind of how it happened for us. We the same tour though we got offered a record deal with a couple of different LA companies. So just, you know, working, uh, working really hard and having the fortitude to get out there in a, a smelly van with five smelly guys, that's what it takes, or girls. But whatever, you know, I mean, it, it's, 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 uh, it's really hard. And you got to realize, you know, like bands that are sitting around waiting to get a record deal, what they need to realize is that if you did get that record deal right now, 
if you did plan a whole tour right now, it would be no different going out there than if you'd just gone out there like we did without any record. You're going to have to go do it anyway. So we did it, you know, we just went out there and played and, you know, it's, you know, our, our key to success has been a, a slow, stable climb. You know, we never got a big break, never got really any airplay or anything, but slowly but surely got better and better. And uh, I mean, that, that makes your band better, that makes your music better. Because you play more, you get everybody gets more locked in, more and more and more and more, and then your songs get more locked in, and it just that's the way you do it. You know, I don't know. That's my advice. To just go to California in a crappy van, and you'll make it big. videos because they they're always saying okay we're gonna put the rev right in the fire now rev it's gonna be a little more uncomfortable just for a few minutes here right in the fire no it's it's fine you know what I do is play music fun because I got to work with a guy named Cardi Talkington and he made this movie called Love in a 45 and it's either the worst movie or the best movie you ever saw in your life one of the two so I guess that makes it great you know so but no it was a fun movie and it's a, a good friend real creative guy and so we had a good time doing that video but videos you know that's not my my expertise I've never seen you so bad I just gotta try to free you free you free you free you Give you the best that you've had But uh, it was really funny. There was a girl there that kept going, Reverend, if you don't make that girl get powder my nose, I'm going to kick her ass. Reverend, and like I'm sitting there going, look, I'm here just like you. I'm, I don't, they're telling me what to do. I can't go get powder for your nose right now. She's like, come on, you're just mad because I wouldn't lay her some bullshit. You know, I don't know what it was. But that was, that was the funny thing of that day is because I had to finally kick her off. They, they got this girl too drunk and she she was she was yelling for powder on her nose and it was too much. I was like going
a hard one because I had 104 fever. And so they had to drag me in every, every segment. And they dragged me in and I'd be like sweating and just feeling terrible. And I walk in, they go, okay, Rev, okay, you're here. All right, good, we can string him up. And so they'd like, they'd, they had this big pulley system. They, they cut a, a little slit in my suit and like they had me hoisted up over the, like I was flying around, I was running, running on a treadmill. And these video people, you gotta, like I was saying earlier, you know, they'll put you right in the fire, you know. Okay, a little closer to the fire. Let's look, Rev, right in the fire for 30 seconds, okay? It's gonna be a little uncomfortable. But they had me like running on the treadmill. They had sparks flying. They had me falling on concrete. They had, you know, so it was, it was kind of hard to tell you the truth because I was ill. But we did it in Chicago and had a, a lot of, most of the people that are all in the segment with us are friends of ours and fans from Chicago. And so it was a fun deal. Yeah, that's the video world, you know, it's really foreign, you know, like I've done, I've done a couple of different things where I did an acting and I don't like it too much because it's, it's not real exciting, you know, like if you look at these guys like Johnny Depp, and Keno Reeves, those guys go out and make five million a movie and as soon as they finish this five million movie, they're going to go make another five million movie. What do they really want to do? They want to go put on their the damned t-shirt and playing a punk rock band. Let's try it. Same. Jay, I love you more than all the others. He saw 
said I've got the best job in the world so you know we're really happy and things are great you know so.